with us. Hi, we're live here, sipping in the studio, answering your design questions, business questions, <laughs> anything that you have in relation to. Good job, Megs. Okay. Oh, so thank you for joining us. I want to introduce my team. My name is Michelle Lynn with ML Interiors Group. And then here we have Lisa Morris, <laughs> Megan Thorns. Hi. I know, I'm like on camera, I have to remember everybody's name. And Debbie Pratt. Yes. She's got them right this time. I know. <laughs> <laughs> See what I have to put up with all the time? Um, so first of all, I want to just put out a gratuitous plug about my business of interior design. It is a digital course that will be going live, God willing, in August of this summer. So if it's not August, it'll be late August. So if you're an interior designer or a decorator or a home stager and you get frustrated, you're not sure how to price your projects, you're not sure how to run your projects, we have proven processes, procedures, pricing, guidelines and so forth. It's everything I really wish I would have had when I was starting my company years ago. So I've gathered all of that and it's just amazing goodness. So anyway, um, if you want more information on that, I actually just started a page, the business of interior design here on Facebook or just ping me directly and I can get you some information on it. So now that that commercial's over, um, yay, yeah, <laughs> let's hope, in a good way. In a good way. Um, now that that commercial's over, let's dig into a couple of questions that I had um, left over from our last Facebook Live, and then two that I popped in here myself, So, because I'm always asked these questions. So, any of you guys who want to jump in, we're going to start with area rugs in the living room. Um, one of the questions that's always asked is, how should the furniture sit on it? Should it sit directly on the entire rug? Should the legs be off and on it? Should the legs not be on it at all? What would you suggest? Well, first of all, don't select a rug where it's just sitting in the middle of the room and the only thing <coughs> on top of it table. is the well, coffee, coffee table. table. So like a post stamp? Yes. Small. Yeah. Um, the only yeah. thing it's defining is a coffee table. An area rug should define the space that it's in. So if it's hmm. your main sitting area, what's in your sitting area should somewhat the most important pieces touch it mm -hmm. some way. Well, how I do make the room look larger. And how do you determine what touches it? That's right. That's right. But would you well, I, and I suggest that you at least have, let's say you have a sofa, coffee table, and chairs around that. Mm -hmm. Or another that, sofa. Yes, or another sofa. So at least the front legs of the sofa is, mm -hmm. is on the rug itself. So and that just kind of gives an illusion of it being on there without yes. paying the price of the larger rug. Right. right. Yes. And then depending on how it sits, your sofa definitely needs to have the front two legs. And then depending on what kind of chairs you have, <clears throat> I would say either the chair needs to be fully on because you're going to be all rockety and you have a glass of wine and then you fall off. Um, so <laughs> exactly. after more than one glass yeah. of wine. <laughs> so you either need to be all the way on or all the way off for the chair. For the chair. Yes. Unless it's stable. Depending the two on legs, the chair. Yeah. yeah, and how high the rug is yeah. too. That's if a, it's a low pile rug, you're okay. That's a good point. And that's yeah. kind of the same in your dining area because there's nothing more frustrating mm -hmm. than having your chairs when right. you're scooting back mm -hmm. after those couple glasses of wine. Mm -hmm literally take a jump down yeah. on the on the rug itself. Yeah, and so the, the, the rule of thumb thing. is like two feet from the edge of the table on each edge for your chair. Mm -hmm. So that's usually enough to scooch back So an in. eight by 10 is generally safe in most, most dining, dining rooms. rooms. Yeah. Um, now there's gonna be larger ones, there's gonna be, you're sitting eight, you can't really get smaller ones. probably need another bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, and if you're gonna put the loop yeah, in your table, yeah. or fit, if, buy the rug for when the, the and you're not Sorry. entertaining. When the, when the table is in the position that it's in for the majority of the time, if you entertain and you have this monster table that seats 10, you're not, you don't need an 11 by 14 rug in there when you put it back down to the Unless table. it's a giant and room, it, right. It, right. And, and then call us. It's six, yes. And then you can do two smaller tables on a monster rug in the dining room. It looks really cool. You have an option. Yeah. Or a couple mm -hmm. of rounds. Mm -hmm. All right. Awesome. Go big. Go big or go home. Go big in your home. So yeah. uh, the little short version of the answer for this question is, it depends. <laughs> that's, Debbie's, that's Debbie's theme right now. Um, okay, great. So speaking of it depends, how long does an average kitchen renovation take? What does it depend on? 
how big the kitchen is and how many details they want how to have. custom it is is it a complete gut or is it just the refinishing finishes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. saving your doors what's what what's behind the walls appliances does anything uh -huh. need to be moved plumbing gas yeah. lines the, electrical which means you would have to more than likely go and drill out or jackhammer out part of your foundation right. or go down under just depending on depending where you live on where you live mm -hmm. and where it's like where the plumbing is located if it's on an exterior wall so let's talk about, about the crazy. project that you just did yes up in Frisco yes and it was pretty much a complete gut it was a brand new built home it's about three years three old, years old. Mm -hmm. but they bought it brand new yes they were and the kitchen um, sucked they were in mid spec home by a custom builder and it just there was no time or reason for the layout of this kitchen there was no balance on the main focal wall of the kitchen the storage situation was pretty odd. Mm -hmm. It the lighting was the bad. lighting was bad. The the way the layout with some of the the side walls made the kitchen feel like it was enclosing in on you mm -hmm. because they happened to paint those cabinets cabinets dark. and uppers dark while the back was light. It so just how was long a whole. Did it take for you to gut all of that and really really Debbie created something completely custom for this client. It was one hundred percent custom. Mm -hmm. There wasn't anything. Yeah. With the exception of the appliances, <laughs> yeah, sorry, oops. with the exception of the appliances, everything was custom um, and you know to yeah. the trade. So it took from start to finish with the design phase mm -hmm. all the way to and we're we're in the punch list phase. So there's a few things here and there that are finishing up and it is functioning right now. That would be a good five to six month kitchen remodel. Mm -hmm. And we had a guide uh, a deadline for a high school graduation right. and the builder the night that family was coming in was finishing up the cleaning up phase yeah. so they Setting can use and that's out. another thing some contractors don't clean mm -hmm. and it, <laughs> I just experienced that it really own. is frustrating if you've gone through such a long remodel mm -hmm. and you can't you know when you're in a tight time frame with your camp company coming you can't put your stuff away right well, it feels never ending it's right like it's done but so it's not done yeah, yeah it's like you're sitting there looking at it so something to consider is if you're going to be renovating a kitchen or a bath or anything there's so much work that needs to be done on the front end, just making your selections, making sure they all work together, making sure they're in stock. So what if you pick some tiles that you absolutely love for your backsplash, and then you go to order them and you find that they're not in stock or you have to bring them in from another city, yeah. overseas, whatever. So plan on, if you are creating your own, um, if you're creating your own design, plan on spending a couple months doing that. Better is also hire an interior designer. but. Even if you have your contractor lined up to start one day, pre-order things. Make sure that everything works. Um, give him all of the specifications and those details so that it goes smoothly once you get the kitchen renovation started. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And do right. plan on it taking longer than you expect. We tell our clients, hey, go ahead and hope for the best, plan for the worst. You'll also probably spend 10 to 20% more than what you budget just because there's always things that there's you always find. Something else. There's always something that you find. And, and with, the walls. with materials, for instance, backsplash tile in a kitchen, um, we used a lot of very unusual shapes for this particular remodel, and there was a lot of waste. And mm -hmm. fortunately, we have a very smart contractor who saw this and thought, you know, Going to need a little bit more than that, the typical ten percent extra. Oh, because so, of the unique shape. The unique shape. Mm -hmm. and had to make a lot of. I was not his favorite person that week. Um, a <laughs> but lot it looks of really it good. looks really cool. A lot of extra cuts, and so he bumped up the quantities that he needed for the job, and he did right. not run out. Which is this. which is the key mm -hmm. is that if you're planning early and you're planning ahead. Um, you can co collaborate with your contractor to make sure that they know exactly what you're using, how, what direction you're going to lay the tile, and things like that. So it really is a longer process than you would ever hope for, but when you're done, it's pretty freaking awesome. It's worth it. Yes. And always order your appliances ahead of time yeah. and have them there before you start. And open the boxes. Open yes. the boxes to your tile. Open the boxes to um, your appliances. Make sure they're not dented. All of those types of details you don't think about. Um, hey, yay, my fridge is here. And then you open the box and holy crap, there's a big old ding on it right mm -hmm. on the front. And then you have to go through the process of getting a new door. and uh, Or a whole new fridge or sometimes. Whole new fridge. Mm -hmm. But here's a gratuitous plug. Call a designer and we'll handle all that for you. Yep. Um, so next question. Oh, cheers to that, right? Cheers. Yes. <laughs> Sipping in the studio. This is episode two. Um, we're hoping to do this regularly. Um, we need a theme song. 
Oh, we do need a theme song. Next anybody time. anybody want to get that on our Instagram? <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. All right, so um, how high should art be hung on the wall? That's a question that we get pretty often. And I know that we were talking about that earlier, and you guys have some pretty solid rules of thumb. Mm -hmm. Who wants to share? Mm -hmm. Uh, well, it's called 60 Center. Um, so think, so every, what's hard is everybody's height is different. So like if you have We're not exactly the same. Not, I'm a little taller. <laughs> <laughs> but you want, because of that, some people want their art to, at their eyesight, and uh -huh. it's not the correct eyesight. Oh, so like my husband is 6'3", and, yes. his and art would be 5'5". Five, five. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> not to be sexist, but usually it's the men who have the artwork. Too high. Too high. Too high. Unless it's Daniel. Yeah. Daniel, yeah, Daniel perfect. We have a but yeah. an expert who knows so exactly how to Usually you take the artwork, no matter how big or small, but the center of it and 60 inches from the floor mm -hmm. up to the center of the artwork. There you go. Which Question is, answered. For someone like me, <laughs> I'm 5'4". So if you look at, look at my head and my face, 60 uh -huh. inches is my eyesight, eye line. Oh, so and I'm, the middle. I'm 5'4", and that's a pretty average mm -hmm. height. Mm -hmm. So it just happens to work out perfectly. Am I taller than you? Yes. Oh, I never knew that. Everyone in this I'm room is taller you. than me. I'm 5'5". Yeah. I'm shrinking. I'm 6'4". <laughs> Keep drinking, Lisa. Yeah. <laughs> You'll believe that soon. But anyway, so that it's it's and it, sometimes it looks a little off if it's higher than that, especially like over a sofa mm -hmm. or over some kind any piece console, of a console right. table. So so there are rules to be broken. They mm -hmm. can be broken, and then you know the center of well, usually like you want to do six to eight piece. inches above yeah. a console. Yeah. Or sofa. So it yeah. all it all depends. Six to eight, but uh, did you guys console. hear that? More so console. Six to eight inches above a console. Perfect. Sofa depends. If it's a low sofa, you don't want somebody's head. Oh yeah, touching so the back. It of your... depends how high your back is on your sofa for that. But cool. usually six to eight. Yep. Yeah. Hire a designer. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> all right. Um, what else do we have? Like, where can I get good fake plants? Because I keep killing real ones. Mm -hmm. I we think, have our resources, don't we? We have, we do. We have two trade learned. resources, which are really good. Um, but if you're looking for retail, I personally have actually not wanted to wait, and I have found good ones both on Wayfair, mm -hmm. which gives me free shipping. Um, I would say Target, honestly. Uh, Target's good Target's too. Target's had some really. I, I don't think I, I've ever gotten any fake plants from oh, Target. I st when we staged the model unit, mm -hmm. a lot. Wait, uh, oh, those world, are cute. World yes. Market and Target. World Market. World You'll find them there. I was in. World um, Market has cute baskets. Cute baskets. Too. I was in Los Angeles last weekend, and we went to like the motherload queen ship of anthropology, and they had <gasps> a special fun, garden. Fun, yes, fun. a garden room. So they had not only live plants and, mm -hmm. and how to care for them, different succulents and everything, but they also had like a the silk mothership. cutting. It was the mothership, <laughs> the mother load of the mothership. Um, they had beautiful silks. They had great containers. They had oh. faux succulents. They had real succulents. Mm -hmm. And they were gorgeous and not the stuff you see. Right. At anthropology? Or at, sort of like anthropology? Totally anthropology. anthropology. Well, it was that just a big sense. anthropology. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. It was mm -hmm. the best anthropology. <laughs> the, mother, <laughs> the mothership. Yes. Well, that works. And then, you know, I'm a huge fan of Amazon. So, mm -hmm. and between Wayfair and Amazon, I don't have to leave my couch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amazon has a beautiful or I can shop in my pajamas. A oh, silver yeah. dollar eucalyptus um, sprig. Mm -hmm. So, and if you're looking for something mm -hmm. that's not um, retail or is that just sh shoulders above the retail options, um, most designers have access to some of these super duper silks that are just beautiful yes. Yes. and they look real and um, they start from scratch well they'll take a branch and turn it into a tree so it can be if you like the twisted braided um, uh, uh, trunk of a tree mm -hmm. and then you like particular leaves they can customize mm -hmm. it and create for whatever height you need any kind of container any species mm -hmm. and they're beautiful they yes. custom paint the branches out so they look really good. It's really nice, but it's unfortunately to the trade. Yeah, so right. that's okay. You just reminded you just me that I need us. to go get my Christmas tree. <laughs> yes, yes. It's time for a new Christmas tree this year, and I'm going to buy ours through one of our vendors. So it's, um, yeah, really pretty. Yeah. Yay. All right, cool. Um, another question is how do we charge for our designs? 
And that, <laughs> come on, Megan, how do you touch for it? It depends. It depends. It so depends. Depends. we actually, and this is something I literally got up this morning and finished writing in module three of the business of interior design course coming out this summer, 2019. We do need a, we do need a theme song. Charlie's Angels. <laughs> Anyway, so um, we particularly, we charge by the square foot. And what we basically do is there's, I'd say, three to four layers that go into every design in every room. And depending on what needs to be done and addressed in the particular room is how we base the square footage price on. So obviously, if you need all four layers, it's going to cost a higher per square footage but if we're just finishing off maybe the last layer or two it's a little less per square foot mm -hmm. and so what we do and our clients totally dig it um, is the flat fee so if we say hey we're gonna come in and design your formal dining room from top to bottom it's X number of dollars and so our clients know that we're not going to go over that on team make sure that we're not spending two million hours just for one room Yes. <laughs> so if it takes us, she looks at yeah. me. Huh? I know. Yeah, but if I was doing it, it would take way longer. Yeah. So <laughs> it's all it's all relative. If it takes us twenty hours to find a, the perfect sofa, or if it takes us five hours to find the perfect mm -hmm. sofa, it's the price is you know we don't charge for that extra for fifteen if it takes us longer than it's supposed yeah. to. We and we have to. Sometimes eat. it does take yeah. quite a quite a while, but you would just get Uber custom. Yeah, although it is more fun to do the Uber custom. Yes. Custom. Uber Delivery custom. of custom furniture. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Just and the more, more, the more you share with your designer, the more she's able to get to yes. the right product right. that you, you like. Less Client feedback is so always, always Share as awesome. much as possible. Mm -hmm. So if you say you, you say you pick out a million different sofas on Instagram or Pinterest to show us what you like, and they're all tufted, but you don't like tufted sofas, but you just like the color or something, you don't tell us ahead of time. We might, might specify, mm -hmm. we might specify mm -hmm. tufted. So, yeah. you know, it's, really it's important. The details are important. That, uh, up front. Something that's important as well as if you are working with an interior designer or if you are an interior designer watching this is, um, front loading with a lot of questionnaires and a lot of interviews gives us a lot of information so that we can put the pricing together based on what you expect, mm -hmm. um, versus just trying to, assume that what you want is X when really what you want is Y. Right. Um, so finding out that information, climbing into the client's head is super important. Yes. And we do quite a bit on the front end even before we get to the pricing <clears throat> point. Mm -hmm. But we also walk our clients through that, that there is the by square footage. And then in addition to that, we have a fee that's associated with procurement. So um, just for example, on procurement, like why do we charge a fee? You're just shopping. Well, what we're not doing is we are not just clicking on something and putting a pillow in a cart. Yeah, it's so retail. it's not retail. So what we're doing instead, when you when you get a pillow from a designer, uh, more often than not, we're going to go through and we're going to completely customize it. And so what we have to do in the procurement stage is one confirm how many how many yards we need for a certain size pillow. If that pillow is 22 inches, then it also depends on the pattern and the repeat where you want the pattern placed on the actual pillow. And then we have to go through and decide, well, what is the, um, if it's a 22 inch pillow, then we need to specify that we want a 24 inch form that goes in it so that your pillow is fluffy. And then what we need to do is we need to determine, does that form come in, um, is it down or polyfilled? And what if it's a blend? Do you want 50-50? Do you want 90-10? Do you want 75-25? And then, I mean, this is just a pillow, right? Are your well, eyes glazing in? Even, I know. You <laughs> can bring up the feathers. Because oh, you can yeah, get feather yeah. down, you can get down. Or luxury two different down. things. Down's better. Down's better. Yeah. Down's better. Yeah. Go with well, that. Um, and then we have to determine if it's going to be a knife edge or a box edge. Zipper, if zipper, zipper, cording. No zipper, cording. If we're going to put trim on it. And so, anyway, our clients, once they understand that a freaking pillow takes that much work, they understand that a, a responsible procurement fee is in place because we have to get all of those details in order. That and tracking as well. Yeah, yes. and yeah. that's just getting it placed. Right. So after that, the procurement fee um, and a lot of this is covered in the business of interior design. Mm -hmm. um, so once the order is placed, we have to follow up on it to make sure that it is um, shipped mm -hmm. when they say they're going to ship it. Not necessarily just a pillow, but imagine a couch or a table or any sort of 
rugs or case goods or whatnot. Um, track when it ships, track when it arrives, and we have to send it to a receiver, which is a professional receiving facility because our vendors don't deliver to a residential area. They have to go to a place that has a warehouse dock. So obviously our studio doesn't have that. It doesn't come here. Plus, what happens at the receiver is they check it in and inspect it. So if anything actually went wrong and something shows up and it's damaged, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. part of the procurement process, and our clients never really hear about this because it's our job to make sure that the process is seamless. But there's all there's sorts of times where you get a delay. Or the fabric is Wrong. Something comes they in stretched wrong. Stretched in too far and didn't oh, yeah. bolster it right. There's, there's or there's a scratch on the that hits the manufacturer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so all of this stuff is what's going on in the back. Um, Plus the logistical part of procurement. Oh yeah. Is, you know, so say all the pieces of furniture from vendor X are in stock, but mm -hmm. some pieces from another yeah. vendor yeah. are not That's in more? are not in stock. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're not going to ship everything and order it all in the same day because fee. there's a storage fee mm -hmm. and we don't want to have, you'd have to pay extra to have it sitting there mm -hmm. when we can time it right so everything gets there at about the same time. We, a lot of our Good vendors can hold stuff money. for us in their, um, their own warehouses and then if, say, one piece is missing, they'll, um, they won't ship it until the order is complete. Mm -hmm. so, Unless we ask them to um, otherwise yeah. so that we can get everything there. Exactly, because it all depends on what the item is, but there's a little bit... It's almost like juggling. You're yeah. juggling all of these it different things. Are you calling us a circle? <laughs> dun, 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 yeah, dun, dun, a bunch dun, of clowns. Dun, dun. Uh, <laughs> so it's there's a lot. It's it's uh, it's kind of evolving to more procurement and logistics. Mm -hmm. So we're ordering and we're managing, and mm -hmm. so it's it's a little bit. It's something our clients don't have to think about. Well, we, and we they have install too. Oh yeah, I mean that's all, it's all lumped in together. Yeah, so mm -hmm. that's pretty cool. Um, that's all the questions that I had lined up for today. If anybody has a question, holler. We'll definitely be happy to respond. Otherwise, send me your questions just straight through Facebook. We'll be back here probably in about three weeks. I'm doing a little traveling. Um, and I think that's all. Mm -hmm. So thank you for joining us. Um, if you have any questions, like I said, please DM me. Um, I'm going to tag these girls in this live. And so if you don't know me, can, can tag yes. your friends here. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for joining. Have a wonderful afternoon in the studio. Episode yes. two yes. is officially Cheers. done. Next Yay. week, be a theme song. Next That's time, right, theme song. huh? Yep.